Hey guys, happy midnight Saturday night by the time this video gets out. So I just want to say that I know I promised you guys a video like two hours ago and I apologize, but I started doing this and then it end ends up going to be part one and part two. I could not get both of them done tonight, so my bad. Um, but I definitely will have part two done tomorrow night. Cause it's and that part two is going to be more of the trial but i kind of felt like in order to do this you have to have the background of len and the whole court system and being that in the last couple of lives that i did a lot of guilters are stuck on certain things and they're not understanding the entire corruption or the timeline of everything and i believe me i've been studying this case for a long time it's a lot of work to really study everything so I went through a lot of my old stuff, a lot of old notes, old videos in the last couple of hours and decided to put everything together. And I, I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. And for those of you that are new to the case, you're going to learn something. For those of you that are old, probably know all this already. But in order to lead up to part two, we need to get through part one and who these people are. So part one is about uh, Len Kaczynski and Judge Len Kaczynski and his abuse of power. Um, so if you guys don't really know who Len Kaczynski is, uh, or Judge Kaczynski or formerly Judge Kaczynski, he was Brendan Dassey's attorney that completely fucked Brendan Dassey. Um, it was the biggest case Wisconsin has ever seen. And Len handed Brendan illegally, unethically to the prosecution just so they can nail Stephen Avery. And I know it sounds like, whoa, can't happen. Yeah, it can happen. And it did. And I uncovered a couple things in this that I don't remember anybody speaking of or talking about. And I, if I'm wrong and you guys have heard this before, what I'm going to get to next. Great. If not, I'm, it's his news. I mean, it really is like boom, bomb, drop the mic. So uh, just to understand Len, um, Brendan Dassey had zero DNA against him. He had zero blood. He had zero fingerprints anywhere. There was like no evidence against Brendan Dassey other than this false confession. Why did he have a false confession? Well, as we know, he's a 60, he was a 16 year old kid with an IQ, I think of 80. Um, he came from an extremely dysfunctional family. And his pretend attorney, Kaczynski, decided that he should tell the media, yeah, Brendan's guilty. And um, Brendan had a confession. It left you like, who the fuck does that? Someone working for the prosecution or somebody who wants to get ahead. And why would he think that? I'm jumping too far ahead. So the problem is Kaczynski didn't care to represent his client. The only thing he wanted was to move up. What I found in the old ar archives, this I did not know, did not remember, completely blocked it out or thought nothing of it in the past. But now it's huge. So the day before Christmas, I don't know who wrote this originally. I, I found it. I, there was no name attached, but it says, I called the Manitowoc Sheriff's Office to report that Kay Kosorek, who's Tom Kosorek's sister, had told me that Tom Kosorek, the ex-sheriff in our county, ran over and killed Ricky Hosletter in 1999. If the, I've always heard that it was Herman or Herman's brother. If you guys have heard that it's Kosorek, because I didn't cover the Ricky Hosletter case, as you guys know, I like disappeared for a year. Um, I didn't follow anyone following it. I didn't have that much interest in it until I read John Farrick's book. Again, if you haven't read it, go pick it up. Once I read that, then I'm like, okay, maybe I have a little more interest in this case now, but I never heard it was Kosorek ever, not in the book, not in previous nothing. So my apologies. If you guys knew this, I did not know this. Um, I am going to ask John Farrick to look into this and see if there's any credibility to it, because that's pretty intense. And Kay Kosorek, Tom's sister had also gone, she spoke to somebody and the husband, she's now dead, but the husband confirmed it that like she was forced to give her brother Gary head or something 
when she was young and nobody like stopped it and either Tom or his father said, you know, oh, that would never go on in a Kasorik house. Like, so this is like a chain reaction from everybody down the line. Like this is for real. So Kasorik was in charge at the time and Bushman and Peterson lied about the cars that were involved and everything, and, you know, went like all different ways. It was a minivan. It was this, they wanted to completely cover it up. The death is still unsolved. Um, maybe on his deathbed, he'll finally admit it, but it does not surprise me for one second that Kasorik is behind this. I've said Kasorik is behind a lot of things, but to know that he probably, that looks legit to me. There was no reason for somebody to just make this up. And Kay's husband, again, confirmed that she, that she said that Tom, and they have spoken to Tom about it, or she was going to speak to Tom about it before she died, that Kasorik is the one that killed Ricky Hostletter. Hostletter, letter. okay, it's late. I still can't say names. So... Everyone involved in Avery's case was promoted to higher positions after they were both convicted. Um, even his own attorneys, Dumb and Dumber, have made a fortune traveling the world. I am speaking for a case, biggest case in Wisconsin that they lost. So as you guys know, I'm not fans of Buting and Strang. Never was. I think they could have done a lot more. And I'm glad that you know, now people are starting to agree with me and see that, yeah, they were dumb and dumber. So timeline begins. I originally put Colburn's timeline up here and decided to leave it just because I had it already. And all right, I'll admit that I forgot to remove it, but I'm going to go past that. So Manitowoc County Sheriff Tom Kasorek asks Avery for the January 3rd booking photo to be included in a lineup. Because the photo lineup, uh, Kasorik renders a composite drawing potentially from Avery's January 3rd booking photo. This is where it seems traced. Jean Kush draws the composite. From the hospital bed, um, Penny Bernstein had reviewed the photo photos. I got the hiccups now. Guess whose photo was not in there? Gregory Allen. Gregory Allen was on watch by the police. Why did they not include Gregory Allen's photo? Now, granted, Stephen and Brendan, I mean, I'm sorry, Stephen and uh, Gregory Allen do look similar. They did look similar. But if I was raped and beaten and raped again and brutally in the middle of the day, I'm probably going to be able to determine who's who. But that's why they didn't want her to get confused and didn't put Avery's photo and didn't put Gregory Allen's photo in it. So the criminal complaint against Allen for the August 2nd, 83 beach incident was contained in Vogel's file for the 85 case against Avery. On September 3rd of 03, Avery's freed from prison after spending 18 years. Back in society, he moves to a trailer with Jody. September 12th, Colburn contacts his superior, um, James Lang, to tell him about the 1995 Brown County detective call. Lang told him, just write a report. And mind you, between 1994 and 1995, Colburn receives a call from a Brown County detective stating that he had someone in custody claiming that Manitowoc County was holding someone in custody for a crime that he committed. So Gregory Allen was like proud of his crimes. Um, Peterson puts the report in his safe. So nobody has seen this. They're already starting a cover up because Peterson doesn't want anyone, doesn't want Colburn to get in trouble. And certainly doesn't want Link to get in trouble. So now we're we're starting to see the cover up of what they do for each other and how they cover each other. So in August, now now I'm jumping ahead, but in August of 05, Avery's girlfriend Jody goes to jail on a Dewey, her fifth Dewey, no less. I am nice girl. On September 22nd, Mark Roher, I'm sorry I got the name wrong, deposed for the lawsuit. On October 10th, now this is important for October, um, Teresa's business partner notices that Teresa's getting calls she's ignoring. I find that a little weird, though. I think I always found that a weird. Legislators move forward on draft bill to compensate Stephen for his wrongful conviction. The expectation is that he'll receive 
400k, making it unlikely he'd settle his lawsuit. Okay. On October 11th, Lank is deposed on, um, huh, sorry about that. I couldn't hold it in and I can't edit. Um, on October 11th, Sandy Morris is deposed and all of those depositions you could see in making a murder one. On October 13th, Judy Dvorak, Dvorak is deposed. She admits to saying the description Penny Bernstein gave her the assailant sounds like Stephen Avery. I don't fault her there because it did sound like Stephen Avery. Um, because they do look alike if you had to describe them. On October 13th, Sergeant Colburn is also deposed. He admits to receiving a call from detective in Brown County that a person in custody claiming ownership for the crime that someone in Manitowoc was being held for. October 13th, Peterson is deposed. On October 26th, this is like a little too close for comfort, uh, Eugene Cush deposed. He's skeptical that Gregory Allen committed the crime of assaulting Penny. He drew the image of the assailant and agreed it looks more like Stephen Avery than Gregory Allen. I'm just the pencil is how he explains why he's not responsible for the results of his work. I mean, there I see he's just trying to get out of paying any money. Gene was also asked to provide commentary on his previous statement where he said, Tom Kasura told Colburn, we already have the right guy and he should not concern himself in regards to the Brown detective informing Colburn of the mistake in 1995. Gene's previous statements all said that James Link was aware of this call. That's sick. I mean, literally sick. And even though I knew this from like two years ago, going through it again, it just makes me nauseous. Like, the more educated I've gotten in the case, the more all of this conspiracy, like, all right, conspiracy is bad word. All of this comes together and you're like, what the fuck? So as you guys know, I've been talking about Kasorik being at the top for a while. And the more I learn, the more I prove that he is at the top and he is the puppet master. Retired or not, this man is the puppet master. So who is Kasorek actually related to? He's related to Remaker. He's related to the Zippers by marriage. Now, could it be different Zippers? Yeah. But there's a lot of Zippers living in Manitowoc. I am convinced they're probably related. Um, some way. It, just like Remaker is seven steps away from Tom, but you know what? That's still a relation and you're still in the police force together. Unless Dave is the most upstanding cop in the whole wide world, he's not going to go against Kasorik. Kasorik is the puppet master. Everybody follows Kasorik's lead or wants to be Kasorik. Kind of reminds me of like Pat Riley of the New York Knicks. Um, I don't know if he's still a coach, but um, when he was coach of the Knicks and he was the coach of Miami, I, he might still be, I don't know. But he was a puppet master. Every man wanted to be him. Every girl wanted to be with him. I mean, not me. I was a teenager. But you guys know what I mean. Um, he was the puppet master. People did whatever Pat Riley wanted them to do. That is exactly how Kasorik is. You do what Kasorik wants you to do. And you do not disobey him. So what have we learned so far? If you break all the rules and you break all the ethical codes, your sword are upheld and you cover up for Tom Kasorik, Peterson, and or Herman, you're going to be granted a higher rank. If you don't cover your asses, cover their asses, you're going to be jobless and you're going to lose everything. So because they're going to lose everything, so they are certainly going to make sure that you lose everything. Now, on November 9th of 2005, Stephen Avery was arrested for having a Marlon Glenfield semi-automatic rifle seized from gun rack on Stephen Avery's bedroom wall. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that wasn't his gun. The 22 that was seized what belonged to Roland Johnson. He was the owner of the trailer where Stephen lived with Jody. On November 10th, deposition was scheduled for Tom Kasorik. On this day, but did not happen. You've got to say that's a little odd that Kasorik was depoted on the 10th and Avery was arrested on the 9th. Depositions. Um, Jerry Pagel announces that Hobbock's bone fragments 
teeth, camera, and cell phone pieces are found in a burn pit near Stephen Avery's trailer. That was also on the 10th. On the 11th, female blood in SUV matched to Teresa Halbach. On November 12th, law enforcement, law enforcement leaves Avery's property. Just two days after Kasorik was supposed to be depoted. Um, now let's get into Ken's lies <clears throat> before blood was even tested. November 15th, deposition was scheduled for Vogel, remember Kasorik's partner in crime. Uh, Ken Kratz announces that the Stephen Avery's blood was found inside of Teresa Halbach's trailer. Um, I don't think that that blood was tested yet, and I don't think it was proven to be Avery's yet. Um, but that's Ken. Now, the reliability of the FBA, FBI lab. On January 19th of 2006, the FBI in Laboratory in Madison determines that the remains found at the Avery Salvage Yard are Teresa Halbach. March of 2006, um, an employee of the Madison FBI Bureau of the Lab was suspended for intoxicating on the job. That may be very significant or it may not be very significant, but it's, is it the same lab person that said it was Teresa's bones? I don't know. I can't tell you. So now we get into more of Mike O'Kelly and Len Kaczynski, but I hope you guys are really starting to see the pattern of how much corruption there is. So Mike O'Kelly had written a letter to Len Kaczynski. Now, what I didn't leave, put in this PowerPoint when it came to Len is Len gave a whole sob story that, you know, Michael Kelly was paid too much and Michael Kelly was paid like, you know, $6,000 or 5,000 and change. And, you know, he didn't do a good job and he didn't know, he didn't let Len know what he was doing. The whole story was preposterous and completely bullshit. So, uh, he wrote, Mike wrote, I think that your visit will be counterproductive to our goals for Brendan. Notice the key words in here are our, it could have been Brendan digging his heels further. He could become more entrenched in his illogical position and further distort the facts. He's been relying on a story that has family has told him what to say about October 31st. Thus, it will take me longer to undo if I can without your visit. Now, mind you, this bomb stuff, that was what I had originally from last year or two years ago. So now it's not such a bomb, but it was then. Um, we need to separate him from fantasy and bring him to reality from our perspective. We need to separate him from the unrealistic world that he resides within. Brendan needs to be alone. When he sees me this Friday, I will be a source of relief. He, him and I can begin to bond. He needs to trust me in the direction that I steer him into. I still get mad when I read this. Brendan needs to provide an explanation that coincides with the facts evidence. Really, whose facts and evidence? But I'm not even going to get started. I, can get on, I went and did like three videos on that alone. So Len writes back, Mike, I will fix the Sheboygan County Jail on Wednesday morning. It is sitting in my printer at the office. As to the items below, I would suggest calling DA's office and talking to Shirley. I'm assuming Shirley was Kratz's assistant. Unless you think it'd be a bad idea, I plan on going to Sheboygan on Wednesday afternoon for a general pep talk and talk to him about giving a complete statement to you on Friday. But just so you know, Len never made that trip. Len never spoke to him. And why is Len, Len's his attorney. Why is he coinciding with Michael Kelly? Like, why did he hire Michael Kelly? I, I can't even begin to tell you how this pisses me off. So in 2006, Kaczynski was removed from the case by the state public defender's office for unethical professional conduct. What a surprise. The state decertified Kaczynski from handling future homicides and other major crimes for the public defender's office because he allowed Dassey to be interviewed by police without legal representation. That's all they got him on. What they didn't know at the time, in all fairness though, they didn't know the Michael Kelly stuff with um, Kaczynski until post convictions were sent. That's when they learned all of it. Now in 1997, Len Kaczynski was elected a municipal judge in 2005. He was reelected as a municipal judge or he was 
uh, campaigning in March of 2005. So I don't know when the election year was, but I'm assuming he was reelected that year. In 2006, he was removed from a public defender. But what the worst part is, after 2006, he was reelected as a judge. So he moved up the rank. So he knew that as long as he got uh, Stephen Avery away, that he was going to be reelected as a judge. <clears throat> part two is coming tomorrow. Um, it shows the womanizer and the abuser that he is. I'm going to talk about the trial. But I really needed, I felt like I couldn't just jump into the trial for everyone that's new and doesn't know the true background of Ken, of Len Kaczynski and how much of the background has affected, you know, everything in this case and Brendan's entire case and the way the trial went. Like, who cares if he got kicked off? You know, it, the characters of Len Kaczynski and Ken Kratz, again, are far worse than Brenda Dassey or Stephen Avery has ever been. And I'm going to get into that in another video this week, just character assassination. Um, because P I've heard people, you know, bash Teresa. She, she's the victim. She wasn't the bad one. Her family, you know, you shouldn't bash her family. Her family, it's her family, you know, and everything about her family is part of this case and that's why i wish they would talk um but i'm gonna get into all of this part two and other videos so i hope you guys enjoy this powerpoint i'm gonna close out with what i open with uh, make sure you subscribe make sure you check out my other videos and i hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic night oh the sound is off we have to put the <laughs> Okay guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow.